According to the official version of history, Russia remained under the political and military yoke of the Mongols for many centuries on end. The term Mongol is usually assumed to have always meant the same thing, however. This turns out to be incorrect. The modern interpretation is of a relatively recent origin, bear in mind that Mongolia didn't exist as an independent state until the early 20th century. The word Mongol simply meant, Great One. Its association with the nomadic tribes hailing from the steppes north of China is a later invention. But why did it have to be invented? The reason is simple, the actual Mongol conquerors of Russia never existed. The yoke theory was created by the court historians of the new Russian dynasty, the Romanovs. It has served the end of justifying the Romanovs' claims for the throne and demonizing their long-time adversaries, the Horde, or the professional Russian army, which remained fiercely loyal to the old Russian dynasty. Deposed and finally destroyed by the Romanovs as a result of a conspiracy. The savage invaders and torturers of the Russian land that we read about in history textbooks were the protectors of the state in reality and ethnic Slavs for the most part. Small wonder historians still cannot find a single trace of the mythical Mongol capital, no such capital ever existed anywhere near the Gobi Desert. History, fiction or science? Is finally available in English. This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fictional Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time. Of all the books in the Bible, none has fired our imagination more than Apocalypse, the book of Revelation to John. On the Greek Isle of Patmos, Apostle John has visions of angels, beasts, the throne of God, surrounded by the rainbow and the sea of glass, lamb who turns into the conqueror on the white horse, dragons etc etc. These verbal images do resemble those from the medieval astronomical and astrological maps. Look at the ancient sky map painted by Great Albrecht Dürer. Astrology was an essential part of life in 14th-16th centuries. Therefore the Apocalypse prophecy edited and printed during this time contains medieval astronomical and astrological images. The astronomical interpretation of verbal images of Apocalypse yields the following horoscope of planets in the constellations. Planet Jupiter and Sagittarius Planet Saturn and Scorpio Planet Venus and Lion Planet Mars and Gemini Close to Taurus, under the feet of Perseus Planet Mercury in Balance Sun in Virgin, Moon under Virgin's feet The tradition says the Apocalypse was written in 95 AD by Apostle John the Apocalypse we know today is the last book of the New Testament. First complete New Testament was edited only in 1515 inches Basel, Switzerland by Erasmus of Rotterdam on the basis of half a dozen of sources. The text of the Apocalypse comes from the manuscript Erasmus lent from the German biblical scholar Rucklin. The only moment in time when the combination of planets and constellations described in the Apocalypse could have been observed live from the island of Patmos was from the 25th of September 1486 to 10th of October 1486. So, when was the Apocalypse, Book of Revelation to Apostle John written? 
This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fiction or Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time.